Hello everybody and welcome to this video. I hope everybody is doing well given the current circumstances. Um, today I thought, uh, well I had a day to myself, I thought I'd hop on here and inject a little bit of positivity by talking about um, a film distributor who I really really have come to appreciate in the last few weeks and who I don't think quite get the recognition they deserve. You know there's a lot of talk of Arrow Video, Vinegar Syndrome, 88 Films um, but powerhouse films are who I'm going to talk about today, slash indicator, I'm never quite sure how to um, how to call them, but the website's powerhouse films, uh, so I will refer to them as that. Now, powerhouse films are a company that uh, release a lot of Blu-rays and Blu-ray box sets. Uh, obviously, if you've watched any portion of my videos, you'll know that I'm mainly focused on horror movies. They do quite a lot of these, which I'm going to show off. Um, but they're far from focused on horror. You tend to find... You know, I think things like 88 films have the slasher classics, they have the Italian collection, which is mainly comprised of sort of schlocky horror and giallo and things like that. Um, that's not the case with powerhouse films. They have a lot of variety. They do comedy, they do film noir. I believe, you know, they did um, a film noir box set recently. It might have been a couple of months ago in their newsletter, um, which I'm sure are all fantastic. It's not things that I own personally, but I mean, this is basically just a video to say, go and buy from these people because they put a lot of work into what they release. Um, <laughs> I've got it all stacked up here. I didn't quite realize how much I had. Um, there's a lot of one-off releases. Um, just a couple to show off there. You know, you've got like your sort of standard looking fragment of fear is the only one I wanted to talk about. Um, but yeah, they do some like this, which obviously, you know, are lovely in themselves, but they are just standard releases. Today, really, I just want us to look at the box sets because I think that's where they really come into their own because the box sets are absolutely lovely. Um, but just a couple of standard releases. I've got the limited edition The Beast Must Die, uh, which was, I believe, the last Amicus film uh, with Peter Cushing and a few other people in it whose names I can't quite remember. Um, and then there's this film. This film doesn't really get talked about much, but it's sort of like a Jarlo murder mystery thriller sort of thing, Fragment of Fear. Uh, with David Hemmings and his then wife, uh, Gail Hunnicutt, I believe. Were they married? Were they, you know, um, engaged? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, really cool film. Just an example of what a sort of standard release of theirs looks like. You've got the lovely rainbow across the top. They're all numbered as well. That's number 22. Always dangerous for film collectors whenever there's numbers on the spine, because even if you don't particularly want the film, you do want to fill the gaps in. Uh, you open up. I'm not sure if these come with every release, but they come with every release I've got. Um, really lovely booklet on really glossy paper, extensive as well. Lots of information about the film. Apologies if you can hear people uh, mowing the lawns. Um, obviously, all about the cast and the crew. You've got um, stills from the movie. You've got a lawnmower that's getting really quite close to the house and getting quite loud. Um, but these are always 10 out of 10, full of information, uh, really well presented. And then you've got the disc, which has the uh, rainbow around the outside. And just to quickly show off The Beast Must Die, Again, pretty similar this one. Uh, that one didn't have rever reversible artwork, this one does. I'll quickly whip the disc out so you can see. There you go. Not really a fan of that poster. I believe the werewolf is stolen from something else. And again, there you've got a lovely booklet with um, Peter Cushing on the front. Um, it goes without saying, really, uh, the quality that these guys put into the aesthetics of the packaging to say that the film transfers as well are absolutely 10 out of 10. Every film I've watched of theirs can't pretend I've watched all of these because I haven't, so you know, don't expect film reviews. All of them that I've seen look absolutely stunning, they sound brilliant, they've all got remastered um, audio and visuals. And, I mean, you know, special features wise, it's, you know, especially the limited edition and the things in the box set, you can't go wrong with it because even the obscure movies that they release, they just dredge up all this information and whack it on the disc like you'll enter the special features menu and it will take up the full screen there's always interviews with so and so commentaries with however many people um and yeah just really really lovely releases now the box sets that i wanted to talk about um i've got one that i'll show off first i'm only going to show the ones that i've got um obviously because i can't show the ones i haven't got because that would defy physics but um they did a series of box sets on Hammer Films, the UK film company. They did a couple for William Castle, the American film director and producer, and the films he made at Columbia Studios. And they also did one for Norman J. Warren. They, they're the sort of three areas I'm going to look at. Um, again, this isn't going to be reviews of the films. I'm not really sure what the point of this video is, maybe just to show off the pretty things. Um, 
But if that's what you want to take away from it, that's good. Um, as well, I haven't actually seen a video with all five of the Hammer box sets in on YouTube, so maybe this is a first, I'm not sure. But we'll get round to that. First one I want to show off is the Norman J. Warren box set. This is my personal favourite box set they've ever released. These do come with um, like slip label, I don't really know what the term is, things that go around the bottom, you'll see them on the other uh, releases as well. This one I didn't like the look of, and I know collectors are going to shout at me, but I did cut it up and I did stick it on there, just because when it's on the shelf it looks quite cool, I think. Um, so yeah, this is Bloody Terror, the shocking cinema of Norman J. Warren between 1976 and 1987. There are five movies in here, uh, which consist of Satan's Slave, Prey, I'm trying to do this without looking, Terror, Bloody New Year and Inseminoid. Um, limited edition contents, again, absolutely full. Um, and I'll quickly open this up. Make sure everything comes out because it is rammed with things. Um, now these are films I have seen, I can comment on these, and these are an acquired taste, they're very, very low budget, um, shock fest sort of movies, I suppose, you know, they are quite visceral and gory, um, quite cheaply made, but really entertaining. I know when I did the series, the Section 3 video Nasty's Ranked, I gave a couple of Norman J. Warren's films a hard time. Upon re-watching them, I've really found an appreciation for the stuff he does, because yeah, you know, the continuity and the acting might not be all there, but what they managed to do on the budgets they had is really quite extraordinary. Um, so I'd recommend all of these movies, really, just, you know, even just out of curiosity. Comes with a poster, a huge poster. It's got Inseminoid on one side. It's kind of hard to see how much of this is in frame. Inseminoid on one side and Terror on the other. Lovely artwork, lovely print, you know, there's not a single mark on it. I bought this new as well from HMV. Reasonably priced as well. Most of these box sets you'll find around £40-45, pounds, with the exception of eh, a couple that are limited edition and will go out of, uh, out of print very quickly, as a couple have. Uh, we also get, with this one, some postcard pictures. Again, print quality is absolutely lovely. These are from the movie Satan's Slave. Um, why they picked Satan's Slave to do the um, picture cards for, I'm not entirely sure. As I say, quite visceral. Um, but nonetheless, very nice to have. I did stick these up on the wall at one point, but I decided to take them down and sort of keep everything that was in with the box sets together. Then we get my possibly my favourite thing besides the movies with this is this lovely booklet. And I'd say booklet, it's more of a novel. It is uh, it's absolutely enormous, it's over 100 pages. Um, so you get a rundown of Norman J. Warren, things he did. Um, really hope you can see this, I can't see the viewfinder very well. Um, so yeah, there's a, a substantial amount on Norman J. Warren himself, and then you get, that one's for Satan's Slave, and then you get sort of, you know, colour-coded pages on each film, so the Satan's Slave is orange, you get um, stills from the movie, you get cast interviews, there's the one for Prey, and it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Interviews with Norman J. Warren in here as well, really, really good. Lovely picture of him on the back as well. And then again down the side, you've got the name of the box set. Really lovely. Um, now as far as I'm aware, I, I'm not sure if they've done another box set where the films come like this. But they're not in individual cases as such, not the plastic ones anyway. So these are sort of card cases, um, which makes it sound tacky but they're really not. Sit and Slave, lovely artwork, lovely print. Open it up there and there is the disc with the lovely rainbow around the outside. Put that down there. Then you've got Prey, which is a film that could have been better, but just piques my interest for some reason. Um, but it is quite good. Apparently it was also called Terror in Amityville Park, which I can't help thinking is... Well, I was going to say Cash in on the Amityville Horror, but I believe this came first. Um, unless that was a re-release title after the Amityville Horror came out. But yeah, um, again, really cool movie. It's got lesbians in it as well. Very trendy for 1977, I think, when it came out. Uh, this is Terror. This is sort of, I believe, inspired by Suspiria. I think Norman J. Warren saw Suspiria and really liked it and wanted to do something kind of similar. It's not quite the quality of Suspiria, but it is nonetheless a very entertaining watch. Um, I'm trying to think. I believe Prey, Terror, and this one were all on the Section 3 Video Nasties uh, list. This is in Seminoid. Maybe his most infamous movie, dare I say. There is quite a lot of unpleasant things going on in this movie. 
Um, you've got Judy Geese and Stephanie Beecham in this. Um, also called oh, what's the Horror Planet, I believe the American title was. Um, again, lovely transfer. Now, something to mention within Seminoid. I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking. Um, when they first released this box set, they had a problem with the Inseminoid disc. I believe like an hour and 15 minutes in or something, it froze for a few seconds. It was like a widespread problem with the production of the disc. Um, and they were sending out copies of the disc, um, sort of re-released copies of the disc, which had the problem fixed to everyone who bought it. I didn't buy this box set until quite a while after it came out. Uh, I did, I, you know, I hate myself for this. I didn't keep my receipt, but I popped in Seminoid in. It did, it was one of the old discs, so it did have the problem. So I thought, you know, on a whim, I'll email them, just see what they can do. Um, and they had absolutely no issue sending me out a replacement disc. So this is actually the replacement disc in here. Double checked it over, the fault is completely fixed. Just another thing to, to add to indicators, Arsenal is fantastic customer service. Uh, so if you've ever got any problems with the releases, don't hesitate to email. And the last one, arguably the weakest of the movies, is Bloody New Year. Kind of a riff on the Evil Dead in a way, but ext I, I mean, I know the Evil Dead was low budget, but this is really, qu <laughs> really quite low budget. Um, I believe it's, it's been so long since I've watched it. Some people get abandoned at a hotel and it's, things go mental, um, is basically the plot. Not the strongest of the movies, but nonetheless enjoyable for what it is. Um, and this, I got, obviously there you've got five movies, you've got postcards, you've got um, each movie again with its bonus features. I mean, you only have to look at the back there on the, on the little box to see how much there is. Um, all of this I got for 40 pounds less than £10 per movie, um, which I just is unbelievably reasonable. I can see another company releasing a box set like this and charging, you know, substantially more. Um, but yeah, that is, that's my, I'm going to start with my favourite. That's Bloody Terror. That's Norman J. Warren's uh, box set from Indicator slash Powerhouse Films. Now we are going to get into the William Castle box sets. Now these I don't know why, but I, was, I wasn't I was in as much of a hurry to pick these up as I was the Hammer box sets. Um, as much as I like William Castle, I don't really know why I wasn't, but I managed to find them for a reasonable price. Again, um, £40 each, I believe these were. Uh, so these are the films that William Castle made at Columbia Studios. Uh, this is volume one. Uh, only four films in this one. This is uh, The Tingler, Thirteen Ghosts, Homicidal and Mr. Sardonicus. Um, this is the little slip covery sort of thing I was talking about. Um, which looks good on the rest of them, but on the Bloody Terror one I wasn't so keen, so I took it off. Uh, and this is a limited edition, this is number 2,945 of 6,000. Um, and yeah, these, as much as I like these box sets, they're, they're similarly laid out to the Hammer ones, but I, I don't know, they, I do prefer the Hammer ones to these ones, as much as these are absolutely lovely. Um, so yeah, similar sort of thing really with these ones, I'll pull them out quickly for you. Uh, so we've got The Tingler, uh, 1959, I believe. I watched this the other day. Um, very first LSD trip on film, so they say it's Vincent Price. Um, and William Castle's a man who was known for the, the gimmicks that went with his movies. Like this one had Percepto, which is something to do with um, vibrating chairs in the, in the theatre. And House on Haunted Hill had a skeleton that hovered over the audience. And 13 Ghosts had like a ghost viewer or something like that that we were given out but i think that often takes away from how good a lot of his movies were the tingler's good it's just a bit bizarre but i think the example like house on haunted hill straight jacket they're quite ahead of the time in that you know yeah they're in black and white from the 50s and early 60s but they still have some genuinely shocking moments in them uh like sort of more so than any hitchcock movie from around that time uh, he wasn't afraid to show graphic stuff, you know, like in Straight Jacket, for example, there are heads coming off, there's, you know, graphic violence really for 1963 or 64. Um, and this is no exception. They feel very ahead of their time, but also very set in the 50s. It's really strange to uh, try and explain. But again, there with the Tingler, loads of special features. Uh, open it up there, you've got alternative artwork, you've got the lovely disc and the lovely booklet as well. Then we've got 13 Ghosts, the original one. 
Um, not a film I've seen, in fact, I can't really talk about this one, um, but I'm vaguely aware of the concept. Again there, lovely booklet as usual. Substantial as well, every, there's William Castle. Um, they never skimp out on these, I know a lot of companies, they'll have like a four page little pamphlet. This again, even for the most obscure movies, is pretty in depth. Uh, which is always nice because afterwards I'll always sort of watch the special features and read about it. Yes, 13 times the entertainment when you use the new ghost viewer. There you go, Illusion Off, that one was called. Um, so I think that was like a thing where if you look through one lens you could see the ghosts and if you look through the other lens they disappeared or something. Um, it would have you know, been really nice if they'd had a ghost viewer in here but again, £40, I'm not going to complain. Uh, in fact the last two in this box set I haven't seen either so I can't really comment but this is Homicidal. Um, sort of his take on Psycho, I believe, um, because he sort of, he started off with horror, you know, he did House on Haunted Hill and The Tingler, and then he, I think he sort of started to drift away, and then when Psycho came out, he went, right, okay, homicidal, we'll uh, give it a bit of competition. This one had a fright break, um, I, what that means, there will be a special fright break during the showing of Homicidal, all those too timid to take the climax will be welcome to the coward's corner. Um, you don't get stuff like that with movies now, do you? Open this up. Again, I'm repeating myself, but absolutely stunning inside. Uh, and we've got alternative artwork. And the last one is Mr. Sardonicus. This one had a punishment poll. So I believe, I've not seen it, but I think the audience at the end had to vote on whether they thought he was guilty or something along those lines. Um, I don't know if two endings were filmed. I get the feeling that two endings might have been filmed for this, um, but that might not be true at all. Quickly open this one up. Doesn't he look lovely? Um, again, alternative artwork, and that is really unsettling. I've just realised that on the disc. I hope you can see that. Um, yeah, really lovely box set. So that's volume one uh, with those movies in it there. Volume two is... A little bit different looking, this is a white box set rather than a black one. Four films again, you've got Zots, you've got 13 Frightened Girls, The Old Dark House and Straight Jacket. Uh, this is uh, lower than the last one, this is number 639 of 6,000. On there, special features as usual. Um, these look as well, they always look really nice when they're sat on the shelf because there's always something really vivid down here, like you'll see with the hammer one, it's always very bright colours, so they always stand out. Uh, it's worth noting as well, all the films in the box sets are numbered as well, as you can see along the bottom there. This is number 98 to 101. Um, we'll start with number 98. This, I believe, is a comedy as opposed to a horror. This is Zots. Um, again, not a movie I've seen, so I can't really talk about it. I don't even know if this one had a, a gimmick. I think this might have been when he strayed from horror slightly. Um, but there you go, again on the inside you've got your lovely booklet and then we've got 13 Frightened Girls, The Big Fright, The Eerie Sight, 13 Frightened Girls, uh, this is number 99 and again on the inside, oh that's difficult to open, there we go. Uh, as, as well, you know, I've just realised the, the boxes that these come in aren't the typical Blu-ray boxes, they don't have the Blu-ray logo at the top, it's not like there's a sort of border, the artwork takes up the full um, full front of the case, so they do look slightly different as well when they're out on the shelf. There's the inside of that one for you. And then we've got The Old Dark House. Now this is a, a rarity sort of, because this is a crossover between William Castle and Hammer. Um, and I, I believe it's a, sort of a comedic take on the 1932 film, I think 32, with Boris Karloff and Charles Lawton. Um, not, this is Out of this box set, this is probably the one I'm most anticipating watching because as much as I'm not a huge fan of, of comedy horror, you know, any combination of William Castle and Hammer has to be good. Um, got your artwork there. You'll die laughing, apparently. We will soon see. Um, and again there, on the inside. And I mentioned this one earlier as well. The last one in these uh, box sets is uh, Straight Jacket, starring Joan Crawford, of all people. Um... Yeah, this is the only one out of this box that I've seen, and as I mentioned earlier, it's 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 a decent little thriller. It's um, I'm trying to think. Of, it reminded me of something as I was watching it. I can't quite remember what it was. Um, again, there's a little essence of Psycho in here with the sort of parent relationship and not quite knowing who the killer is. Um, 
but again, you know, it's really entertaining throughout. It's shocking for its time. It's got some really effective jump moments in it. As do a lot of his films, actually. The Tingler and House on Haunted Hill have got particular moments in them as well, which if you've seen them, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and yeah, apparently, um, well, I was watching the special features and they said ever since what, whatever happened to Baby Jane, there was a sort of trend of older sort of ageing film uh, stars starring in sort of really, I don't know how to describe it, just unsettling thrillers. You know, there was Whatever Happened to Baby Jane with um, Betty Davis, then you had Joan Crawford in the likes of this. Um, and yeah, I mean, I haven't, you know, it's not a genre that I'm particularly familiar with, but I can see this being one of the more solid entries. I really enjoyed this one. Um, and yeah, that concludes those two box sets. As you can see, they sit together on the shelf very nicely, contrasting each other. Um, and now we're going to move on to the Hammer ones. Now I feel like this for many people might be the star attraction of this video and potentially two powerhouse films. Because um, these, I mean the first one I'm going to show off in particular is really hard to get hold of. Again I think they're limited to 6,000 um, but volume one in particular is very hard to get hold of. I think it retails now for about £100 at sort of very bare minimum unless you can find it in CEX. Um, like I did. I find CEX, as much as they can be a little bit unreliable with um, your limited edition things like this, if you catch them right, they've got really decent prices. And I mean, as you'll see, I got this one off CEX. The um, It's basically like new, which is lovely. Um, so yeah, this is Hammer Volume 1, Fear Warning. Uh, this is the one that is really difficult to get hold of. This is number 4,557 of 6,000. Uh, and as you can tell, these ones focus on Hammer films, which are, well, a lot of people think of Hammer films and they think of like Dracula and Frankenstein. These box sets delve a little bit deeper into the sort of things they did before that and a few films that sort of slipped under the radar a bit at the time. Uh, so this one consists of a couple of thrillers and then a couple of sort of monster movies as well. Um, so I'll quickly take this off. There is a cool story about this particular box set, which I'll tell at the end. Um, again, everything is numbered. I'll pull these out. And the first one in the uh, in here is Maniac, which is one I watched recently. Really quite good. Uh, it's one of the Jimmy Sangster thrillers from the, I want to say 60s, it might be late 50s, does it say on the back? 62, 1962. Um, yeah, not Maniac with Joe Spinell, not Maniac with Elijah Wood. This is Maniac with Kerwin Matthews. Um, yeah, I mean, decent little thriller. Nothing, nothing particularly stand out about it, but it is a decent little film. Uh, enjoyed it for what it was. Open it up. Pretty sick of me showing these off, I'm sure, by now. Um, up next is um, The Gorgon, which is a Hammer film which I think gets sorely overlooked. Um, it gets sort of lost in between the sort of plague of the zombies, the reptile. Um, and this one slips under a little bit, but it does have some genuinely unsettling moments in it. Uh, as much as the special effects maybe don't hold up too well, I think it's a perfectly passable movie. Um, and I believe it was also the last collaboration between Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, and is it Terence Fisher who directed it? I think it, yeah, it says Terence Fisher. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the last film he directed uh, starring uh, Lee and Cushing, which is uh, a landmark as well. Um, I love the alternative artwork on this one. The, um, it's really quite vibrant. So you've sort of got the pink one, which I've opted for, and then you've got a really bright yellow, garish one in the middle, uh, which is really lovely. Underrated movie if you haven't seen that one, that's The Gorgon. Uh, and then we've got, haven't seen this one, but this is The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. Uh, they did a couple of mummy movies, um, Mummy Shroud, Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. I've seen those two, I haven't seen this one. Um, this may have been the first, I'm not sure, no, because they did one called The Mummy, and then I'm assuming this was the second one. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Um, again there, lovely artwork. And inside there you've got your booklet and your alternative artwork. Special features, always. Uh, and this is the last film in the first set. This is Fanatic, again. Is this Jimmy Sangster? Uh, no, it is not. But again, I think this is one of the sort of early 60s black and white thrillers. Um, if the, um, the hand holding the knife is actually the artwork on the front of the box, which is cool. Very vivid, very vibrant. Open it up. And yet again, speaking of vivid and vibrant, it was also called Die Die My Darling, apparently, because that's the uh, title on the inside there. 
So yeah, um, the story, <laughs> lawnmower, the story with this box set, as I put this away, I will tell you. So yeah, I got into the hammer box set only very recently, and as I say, even as, as I got into them, uh, the first volume was really quite hard to get hold of, I couldn't really find it anywhere for a reasonable price. Um, and I thought, you know what, I will, I will look just by chance one day I was at work, I had a bit of time to myself. Apologies for the jump cut there, I just had to close the windows because if the lawnmowers were any closer, I'd be getting a haircut. Um, so yeah, I was in work one day, I just thought, you know what, I'm randomly just going to check on the CEX website. In stock, I thought, okay, exciting. Um, 60 pounds, a little bit more than you'd expect to pay for the others, but for a limited edition one that's really out of print and hard to find, I thought, yeah, that's fine. Check stock locally. They had one in, and it was in the CEX, that's about a five minute walk from where I work. So I go down there after work, um, I have a look in, and all five of the box sets are there because there's um, there's a lad who works in that shop who I sort of natter to occasionally when I go in. He traded all of his in. So this is actually his old box set. This is the one I managed to grab. Um, the others I wasn't too sort of fussed about um, initially because I thought, you know, they're a little bit easier to find. Um, but yeah, the, the look involved in me getting that box set is unbelievable. The fact it was only in stock in one store in the country and it happened to be the store that was five minutes from where I work. It sounds unbelievable, but believe me, it's true, um, which is why I wanted to tell you. And you can call me a jammy, whatever you want to in the comments. Volume two, another one I was excited to get hold of. This is entirely um, crime movies. And well, in fact, it's called Criminal Intent. Uh, limited edition, limited edition, 5,833 of 6,000, so quite a high number on this one, but not that I really care about that. Um, <laughs> again, funny story with this one. I got a call from the Amazon driver, I got this one through Amazon, 40 quid, because um, I wasn't in uh, when this was getting delivered. I got a call and he said, what do you want me to do with it? Where do you want me to leave it? I said, well, can you slide it under the back fence? Won't fit. He said, I could throw it over the back fence. And my brain went, don't make, don't let him throw it over the back fence, don't let him throw it over the back fence. But then the impatient part of me went, yeah, but if he does that, you'll have it when you get home. Um, so I went, yeah, yeah, just throw it over the back fence. I'm assuming it would have been packaged up and everything. Um, and I was in fear all the way home that it was going to be an absolute wreck. It was raining as well that day, so it was just laid there getting soaked. Um, it's here, it's in perfect condition. Well, there's a slight dent in it, but we'll forget about the slight dent. Um, yeah, happy about that. Uh, this is really interesting artwork on this one, as you can see, like bright green and yellow. Uh, this contains the snorkel, never take sweets from a stranger, the full treatment and cash on demand. Uh, I've seen three of these ones. The snorkel is um, a bizarre little movie. It's got, um, uh, why, am I, why am I trying to guess it? It's on here. Better St. John, I think that's her name, um, who is probably best known for City of the Dead, or at least she is in the horror community. Um, she's in this one and it concerns a man who um, wears a snorkel and links it up to the outside um, air supply of a room. He sort of seals it off with tape and gasses women to death, basically. Um, so quite a grim little movie. Not my favourite that I've seen, I have to say. Um, it also has Peter Van Eyck in it. I don't know how to say his name, but he's a German actor as well. Plays the killer really well. Um, and I mean, yeah, I've watched it on one of my days off and really quite enjoyed it. So there is that. As usual, you've got your lovely interior. Uh, now this one, arguably the most interesting one in the set, Never Take Sweets from a Stranger. Also, I believe Never called, uh, never Take Candy from a Stranger, it was called in America. Um, this is a film that was very controversial when it came out. You can probably guess why, because yeah, the title does suggest that what it's about and yeah it is about that and it doesn't shy away from it um but this film had the backing of the nspcc i believe because it does go there and it does warn of uh the dangers of sort of you know kids speaking to strangers and things like that i, I think they wanted a as an a certificate or I, i'm not so sure with the letters but they ended up getting an x they wanted kids to be able to see it but evidently with what happens in this movie that was never going to happen um, so it ended up being an X, but it still served as a really good warning to parents um, not to let your children go dancing naked with old men. Uh, is I mean, I wish I was joking, but that is essentially the plot of this movie. Um, 
And yeah, it gets, it goes there. It gets really dark, really unsettling. It kind of took me by surprise, um, but I really liked it. And that is my mum's Christmas present. It wasn't my mum's Christmas present. It was someone else's Christmas present and it's really big and now I'm out of breath. Oh, and now we move on to, I'm just surrounded by powerhouse. This is lovely. Um, the only film in this set that I haven't seen. Uh, this is The Full Treatment. Uh, one that I was actually planning on watching today, which is sort of where the idea for this video came from. Um, give me a minute. Okay, asthma attack successfully evaded. Where were we? The full treatment. Um, yeah, like I said, this was one I'm going to, uh, well, I was going to stick on today before I had the idea to do this video. And I'm quite intrigued by this one because a lot of the films that they did like this, you tended to find, like, I mean, the next one, there's 81 minutes in length, never take sweets from a stranger, 81 minutes. Uh, the Snorkel, 91 minutes, you know, they were sort of relatively short films because they were working on a low budget. This one's nearly two hours, so I don't know if I'm to expect anything particularly spectacular with this movie. I mean, probably not, to be honest, um, although I'm sure it'll be a perfectly passable and enjoyable little movie, or big movie. Um, but yeah, as well, on the back as well, I mean, I'm intrigued. You will experience the cold sweat of fear. Uh, I will apparently feel the razor edge of suspense. I will love, uh, I will love the loves, I will live the love scenes that scorch and sear, fingers crossed, um, and I will be shaken by the shock ending, which, I mean, we all love a shock ending. And uh, yeah, apparently the full treatment has that. Oh, lovely inside. Uh, alternate title in America was Stop Me Before I Kill, which... I mean, it's quite a good title, whether or not it's as fitting as the full treatment, I don't know, because I haven't watched it yet. And the last one in this box set, um, and the first one, in fact, that I watched was Cash On Demand. Um, sort of a different movie. It's not so much a murder mystery as just a straight out crime thriller. And it is sort of like a more adult version of A Christmas Carol. It's set at Christmas. You've got Peter Cushing, who plays this sort of grumpy bank owner who doesn't appreciate his staff. Um, and then Andrew Morel, Andre Morel comes in and um, fucks him up, basically. Um, no, he, he sort of gets in under the guise of being some sort of uh, manager or inspector or something like that. And then as soon as the door shuts, you find out that, yeah, he's after money. And it's a very tense movie. I was actually quite sort of, you know, on edge through the whole thing because there's a lot of, you know, we have to shut the safe by this time or else the alarms will go off. And if that happens, I will kill your family, sort of. Ah, you know, it's um, it's not a plot that is particularly unique. You know, I think there's a few films that have this sort of similar vibe going on. Um, this film does it spectacularly well. I really, really enjoyed this one. And uh, I think this one probably sets the tone for the rest of them, where it's not particularly based around graphic violence. It's not particularly based around um, sort of in-your-face jump scares and things like that. It's more just underlying very subtle but very effective drama and and thriller elements um, which I think is uh, what this second box set is is really about rather than just straight up horror like the first one uh, so I'll pack these away and then I will show off volume three um, now I must admit volume three and volume five are probably the ones I was least excited to pick up because they are comprised mainly of sort of action adventure which I mean, I, I might really like, but I really bought these for the thrillers and the horrors. But I'm not to judge a book by its cover. I will gladly sit and watch all of these um, and, you know, give them their fair share. So this one is volume three, Blood and Terror. Uh, again, this is sort of more, um, maybe more action than adventure. The sort of the fifth box set is more adventure, but this has uh, The Camp on Blood Island, Yesterday's Enemy, The Stranglers of Bombay and Terror of the Tongs. Uh, in it, which I, I, Terror of the Tongues is probably one of the more famous ones in one of these box sets, but it's again not one I've seen, so I can't really comment. Um, special features, again, absolutely lords. You've got your lovely vibrant spine. Speaking of vibrant, I love the artwork on this one because that a, a lot of them are quite sort of subtle. That's just in your face, that's the camp on Blood Island. Um, by the looks of it, it's a war film, which I mean, I'm all up for. In fact, I might watch one of these tonight. Do you know, I do that sometimes. I think, you know, I'm, I'm going to watch a film that's probably going to pleasantly surprise me. Um, I can't remember that actor's name for the life of me, but I'm sure he was in the Quatermass Experiment. Is his name on the front? It 
Matt, it's not Andrew Morell. What Fitzgerald, Edward Underdown, and Carl Mona? I couldn't tell you, but he, he played an excellent part in the Quatermass experiment. Um, so if his performance in that is anything to go by, then this should be a pretty damn good movie. Then we've got Yesterday's Enemy. Again, War as Hell looks more like a war movie. Uh, not one I've seen, so I can't really comment. But even, even the films that... I mean, with respect to the films, even the films that I'm less interested in, I can still appreciate the sheer effort and amount of work that's gone into the production of these because they are absolutely lovely. As I mentioned at the start as well, the transfers on all of these are just fantastic. Stranglers of Bombay, this one is. Um, I get the vibe that this is not mafia, but a sort of, do you know, um, crime, sort of underground crime sort of movie. Um, I might be totally wrong on that one, it's just sort of the vibe that I've heard about sort of gangs and street crime and things like that in Bombay, quite possibly. Uh, again, lovely and vibrant on the inside, you've got your booklet there. And then you've got your classic Terror of the Tongs, a movie that probably wouldn't be allowed to be made today, at least not with the actors who were involved in the first time. Christopher Lee, of course, playing um, the lead role in this one, I believe. And again, there he is as a... Vaguely racist stereotype, but I'm not going to get all political in this video. Um, again, all of these have got reversible artwork, and the artwork on the box set themselves actually comes from the movies inside, uh, which is nice. So as much as, you know, it's not original artwork on the box sets necessarily, it is nice to see them um, integrating it into the presentation of the whole set. So that's volume three. Excuse the nose itch. Volume 4, this is one I was quite excited to pick up because again this sort of harks back to the um, the horror side of Hammer. This is Faces of Fear, um, again fourth, fourth volume but this is the first one I picked up. So this one's got The Revenge of Frankenstein, The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, Taste of Fear, also known as Scream of Fear I believe in America, and The Damned. So I, I haven't, have I seen any of these? I've seen Taste of Fear, but it was a very long time ago, and I haven't watched the sort of box set version of that. Um, so we're going to start with the first one, Revenge of Frankenstein. Uh, I believe this is the second Frankenstein film that Hammer did, following The Curse of Frankenstein. Um, and part of me, part of my brain tells me that before this box set released, this was quite an obscure movie. I don't know if it didn't have many good releases, or if it, if it had a release at all, I'm not too sure. Um, but with Frankenstein, you tend to hear about the curse of Frankenstein, Frankenstein created woman, Frankenstein and the monster from hell, and then the sort of later ones. You don't really hear about this. This and the evil of Frankenstein, I believe, are two of the sort of more obscure Frankenstein movies they did. Um, so I am quite intrigued to see it. Um, Christopher Lee not in this one. Christopher Lee played the monster in the original. Uh, that's not the case here, but Peter Cushing is still in it, uh, which is always nice to see because he is one of my favourite actors. I've got The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll. Uh, this one does have Christopher Lee in it, and not a movie I've seen. Um, I've heard that this one's okay. I've heard it is Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde slightly more loved than this one. I'm not entirely sure. Um, these are a lot of sort of... I don't know how to describe them. They're not monster movies as such, but they've got that vibe to them. They did a lot of them in the sort of late 50s to the 60s, and they do get muddled up slightly. Um, Taste of Fear. This is. I'm looking forward to watching this again because I very, vaguely remember it being really, really good. Um, it's about a lady in a wheelchair who goes to visit her dad, but he's dead or something like that. I don't know. Um, I mean, she's certainly got a face on her, so it's probably something like that. And then I believe the alternative artwork on this one is the American. Yeah, so that way the alternative artwork is Scream of Fear, which is slightly more um, eye catching than Taste of Fear, but. I'm British and I like the British titles and the British cuts. And the last one, uh, this is The Damned. Uh, this one's interesting because it comes with two discs. This comes with the UK cut and the US cut, I believe. Oh, right, so there we go. I mean, it says it on the back there. Alternative presentations of the complete 96 minute version, playable as either The Damned or These Are The Damned. So that's, I mean, I've chosen the cover for These Are The Damned there. That's probably the American title, so I've just contradicted myself. Um, got your booklet there with Oliver Reed on the front, but then you've got two discs in this one, which is nice. Um, so the, where are we at? Does it say which one's which? All right, so disc one is the extended version and the extras. Disc two is the UK theatrical cut. 
Um, I'm assuming it was called The Damned in the UK and these are The Damned in America. Um, but I could be totally wrong there. Not a movie I've seen. I believe my dad's seen this and he said it was pretty damn good. So looking forward to that one. Pop these back in here. And this is one that really stands out on the shelf because it is bright yellow. And then obviously you've got your uh, bright red slip cover around it, which I will pop on now. Uh, this is number 5,005 of 6,000. And whoops, don't know if I read set three. 3,051, that one was. And the last thing to show off. Um, I don't really know what this video has been. I don't really do videos showing stuff off anymore, but I just really fancied showing these off because they are pretty damn cool. Um, this is the adventure box set. This is the one that, again, maybe doesn't uh, pique my interest as much as the others, but nevertheless, it's really nice to own. This is Death and Deceit, volume five, uh, with Visa to Canton, 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 I don't know how to say it. Uh, the Pirates of Blood River, the Scarlet Blade, and the Brigand of Kandahar. Um, two sort of piratey adventure movies in here. Uh, movies 183, 184, 185, and 186. And this is number 1,355. So not too bad on that one. Pop these out quickly. I promise I won't take up too much more of your precious time. Get these out. Uh, we've got Visa to Canton. Um, again, possibly a war film. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, there we go. The Western world is still rocking from a series of aircraft incidents that came close to turning the Cold War into a hot one. We love a pun. Um, this is produced and directed by Michael Carreras, who is a Hammer regular. So, I mean, he's got a, a good track record of making good films. So I'm assuming this is uh, nothing different. Got the inside there. Then we've got The Pirates of Blood River. This one's got Kerwin Matthews again from Maniac, Christopher Lee uh, and Glenn Corbett, famously the brother of Ronnie. That's not true. Um, yeah, pirate adventure movie. Not, again, a genre that particularly interests me, but it is Hammer. It's got Christopher Lee in it. I'm going to have to watch it at some point, and I'm assuming I will enjoy it. Uh, the Scarlet Blade. This is another one with Oliver Reed in it. Uh, fabulous feat of swashbuckling adventure never seen before. So again, more pirates, it looks like. Um, again, lovely presentation on these. It's hard to describe how lovely they are, um, but it's just... Something just came through my letterbox. Uh, yeah. Always guaranteed to have really lovely presentations with these, even on, like I said, films that maybe aren't on the top of my priority list. And the last film included is The Brigand of Kandahar, which looks like a sort of uh, carry on up the Khyber vibe, um, probably minus the carry oning. Pouring across the scorched plains of India, a horde of bandit raiders and a brigand who led them to triumph. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, sounds pretty much uh, like carry on up the Khyber. Um, but not starring Kenneth Williams. Oliver Reed, again, in this. Oliver Reed is always an entertaining actor, so even if the movies aren't, you know, up there with the best of hammers, I'm assuming there is going to be at least his performance to enjoy. I'm going to pop these back now. And pop the cover back on. Um, so, yeah, I don't know really what you want to take away from this. If you wanted to um, watch to get a vibe on what the box sets were like before you made your investment, um, although any online review of these basically says the same thing, which is buy it, buy them now. Please, God, give these people your money because they put so much effort and time into these things. Um, and I, I, as far as I'm aware, this is not where they're stopping. They're not going to stop at volume five. I think they've got every intention to continue. Um, and another thing to mention as well is I was urged to get the Hammer box sets after... Is it Mill Creek, I think they're called? Um, announced a box set of, I think, about 20, 25 Hammer movies, a lot of which are included in these box sets. And people basically said, I'm sure the Mill Creek box set's going to be lovely, but why would you go for it when you've all, always got, you know, these sitting for a vaguely reasonable price um, and are most likely going to look and sound a lot better um, and have a lot more special features, as these do. Um, so, yeah, if, if you just wanted to see the box sets... I hope I've um, satisfied your thirst for them there. If you're wanting a recommendation off me, it's that if there's any film that's even vaguely of interest to you that is released by Powerhouse Films, I would urge you to go and invest because you know you're always going to get quality from them. And if, I mean, I don't know what else you'd want from this film reviews. I'm sorry I've let you down on quite a lot of these, but I don't want to uh, give false recommendations on these ones. Um, that's pretty much it, really. I'm going to go and try and 
wrap that enormous box that came through the door halfway through the video. So, um, yeah, thank you for indulging me. Thank you for watching. I hope, like I say, I hope everything's going all right for everybody, given the circumstances. And I hope to see you all again very soon. Goodbye.